Hello everyone, back tuning into today's first video. We're doing the July month head forecast for today's uh, first video. So we'll have a recap on uh, June's forecast, see how that went. Uh, we'll give you the July forecast, and then at the end we'll have a little sneak peek at August. So um, obviously June was a very warm, very hot month indeed, and also very dry. I've been waiting through the morning for the um, UK-wide climate averages to come in uh, at the UK Met Office. Fortunately, we have an update. I think just because of how the uh, calendar has fallen this month, uh, the weekend is delaying everything. So I was hoping to be able to bring you the climate averages for June uh, from UK Met, but I've been not been able to. But as soon as they become available, um, we will bring you uh, both. But we know it's been a very dry and a very warm month indeed. The Gazovis.com June forecast was for a dry and warm month. So I think overall uh, the June forecast went uh, quite well. So um, I'll show you the CT, how what that's coming at for uh, June. I'll say when we get those UK-wide climate uh, averages for June, I will bring you those in a future uh, video. Just say that coming up later on today, we'll have a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. And then this evening, we might do uh, an update for some events and festivals that are coming up at weekend. It'll be a busy weekend of events coming up. So we'll start off with the CT for uh, June. This is as much as I can bring in terms of what happened in June so far. Um, i going to say, again, the climate averages for the UK haven't updated uh, yet at UK Met. So for June, we came in at 16.1 with the CT, an anomaly of just under uh, 2 degrees above average. So uh, that's tied uh, with uh, June 2003 as the warmest June since 1976, warmest June for 42 uh, years. You'll notice that the first day of July, we're already at 20.8, an anomaly of five degrees above average just for the first day uh, of July. Obviously, if we was to keep that up over the whole month, that um, anomaly, we would have the hottest, uh, both hottest July and the hottest month on record. Um, but uh, it's going to be tricky to keep that sort of uh, sustained level of heat going throughout the month. But you never know, because um, it's turning into a very, very warm summer, uh, indeed, to say the least. So overall, I think the GazWeatherViz.com June uh, monthly forecast went quite well. Uh, so this is the 700 bit of our height anomaly from CFSV2 for July. It shows a large area of above average height centred right over top of the UK. The jet stream is to our north with the below average heights around Greenland. The jet stream is going up there. Still got signs of a bit of a split in the jet as well. There's some below average heights close to uh, Spain and Portugal. So some energy is going down into the med. So... If the CFS is right, we're pretty much keeping the pattern for July, but we've had for quite a long while now, certainly going back into May, we've been in this pattern, maybe even uh, as far back as uh, the end of April. So we have the split in the jet stream. We've got some of the energy going to the north of the UK, some of the energy going to the south, into southern Europe. So it will remain a mixed summer, to say the least, for Spain, Portugal, and the Mediterranean, and we remain under this big blocking area of high pressure. We call this an Omega high. It's blocking off the Atlantic, and when you when we get stuck under these high pressure belts, uh, these blocking features, they can last a very very long time, especially at this time of year, because the jet stream is always weaker anyway in the summer due to the lack of temperature gradients between the tropics and the pole. That's typically what drives the jet stream. So in the winter, uh, you have a strong temperature gradient between the pole, between the Arctic, between the, the tropics. And so the jet stream through autumn and winter will be stronger. At this time of year, there isn't that pressure gradient, or not as much of a pressure gradient anyway. So the jet stream will always be a bit weaker anyway. And then on top of that, we've got this block uh, within the atmosphere. And so uh, that's just diverting the jet stream away to our north and to our south. So the upshot of it all, is that we're looking at another significantly warmer than average month. This is the CFSV2 uh, temperature anomaly for July 2018. It's coming out substantially warmer than average for the UK, for Ireland, for much of France, for some of Scandinavia, Denmark, uh, the low countries, Belgium, Holland, and also 
uh, particularly western parts of Germany. You'll notice the temperature anomalies are cooler than average through Spain, Portugal, hinting at being a bit cooler than average through the Med as well, and also across eastern and particularly southeastern parts of Europe, down to Greece and Turkey, coming out cooler than average there. This is a very classic setup that you'll get in uh, Europe when the northwest is hot and dry, the south and southeast will tend to be cool and wet. That's the precipitation anomaly forecast from uh, CFS V2 for July. And the drought goes on, basically. Substantially dry on average for the UK and Ireland. Substantially dry on average for much of Northern Europe as well. Southern France, Spain, Portugal, the Med, down to Italy, into the southeast. Those areas still coming out uh, wetter than you would expect. But in the north of Europe, it looks uh, very dry uh, indeed. M much much drier than you would expect. So a hot and dry month with high pressure dominating is being predicted for July by the CFS V2. What about the Beijing Climate Centre? Let's have a look at the 500 millibar height anomalies. They're broken down into 10 day periods. The first 10 day period will take us uh, from the 1st through to the 10th of July. So the first 10 days of month, we find above average heights again centering themselves over top of the UK and also come over here over towards um, Northern Europe as well. We've got a split in the jet stream being depicted, but we see CFS V2. So a lot of the energy of the jet is up to our north around Greenland and going up there. But we have got some energy also going down into the south, into southern parts of Europe, and we remain blocked off. We're blocking off the Atlantic with that big area of high pressure. What about the next 10 days? Any sign of a change? This is from the 11th through to the 20th of July. And the uh, below average heights continue to our north. So that's where the jet stream is. Possibly just a jet coming a little bit further southwards there. Maybe a slightly more of an influence from the jet for northern parts of so Scotland. Possibly turns a bit more unsettled and cooler, but essentially we're still under that ridge of high pressure, so a still still a lot of dry uh, and very warm uh, weather continuing there. And then we go through to the next 10 day period. It'll take us from the 21st through to the 30th of July. Below average heights continue to be to the north with jet stream uh, above average heights over and to the south country. No real change, no real deviation. And so you would expect a very substantially drier and hotter an average month to be on the way if the Bayesian Climate Centre is correct. This is the overall 500 millibar height anomaly from the Bayesian Climate Centre for July 2018. It places a big area of above average heights over the top of the UK and extending out to our east as well. The jet stream is going off up there. So again, it's substantially, uh, substantially high pressure dominated. Um, through the course of July 2018. Therefore, temperature anomalies for July are coming out substantially warmer than average. The anomaly is somewhere between around 2 and 3 degrees above average, so a hot month coming up. Uh, we're not alone. Most of uh, Northern Europe is coming out warmer than average as well. Uh, it isn't as um, cool to average either in the south and southeast of Europe, unlike what we saw with the CFS V2. And as far as precipitation is concerned, finally, so it comes out significantly uh, drier than average. Another dry month coming up with kind of like uh, 20 to 50 percent. Uh, down on rainfall, 20-50% of average rainfall. So a uh, substantially drier and hotter than average month coming up. And that's forecast across both of these models. So I think that's what we have to go with for July 2018. Now this is against the summer forecast. The summer forecast suggested we're likely to see a deterioration of the pattern through the course of July, but we're just not seeing any signs of that happening at the moment. So obviously, the summer forecast is in a bit of trouble now, um, and that's another factor that we'll have to look at when we come to the end of the summer. We will evaluate the Gamsomism.com summer forecast and see what happens, see if it does go wrong, where it might have gone wrong. Um, but uh, you can only go by what you're seeing at the time. And, and we're just not seeing any signs whatsoever of the deterioration, a breakdown to this anticyclonic pattern, at least for July. So we have to go for a hotter 
uh, and drier than average uh, month. I think it could be a significantly hotter than average uh, July this. Uh, maybe well be a, um, a temperature anomaly again of two degrees or more above average. That would take us into the realm of being up there with some of the hottest months that we've recorded in the UK uh, over the past hundred years. It will, I think, it very likely have uh, a CT above eighteen degrees Celsius. We only have one of those uh, months um, this uh, this decade, actually, about July 2013. So we are overdue uh, a, a hot, a really hot month. I think this could be it. I think it could be in for very hot July indeed. And also very, very dry. That's going to be the other big story, I think, over the coming weeks. There's no sign of a return of a jet. There's no sign that we break out of this high pressure. So I think we are probably looking at a very dry month as well. And it's already tinder dry across a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of the country, as we know from these wildfires that we're getting. So um, I would expect more of that to come, I'm afraid. Uh, more wildfires. And uh, I suspect most of us will be having drought, sort of droughts uh, declared by the time we get through to month's end. So a hot and dry July is the forecast from uh, Gazweb is following on from the hot and dry June. For even be more unsettled face, it's possibly the middle part about just a few hints there from Bayesian Flight Centre, but particularly for the north, particularly for northern parts of the country. But uh, I'm not really seeing a, a prolonged, protracted spell of unsettled weather. Rainfall, when it does come, will probably be uh, exceptionally variable uh, from thunderstorms. So in a hot month, you'll tend to get thunderstorms cracking off here and there. I think storms will probably be below what you expect in a normal UK hot month due to the strength of the high pressure, but there will still be storms. So expect one of those situations where there's a lot of variability in rainfall, but overall a very dry hot month coming up. Finally, just having a look at the CFS V2 for August. This is how it's looking. And, uh, well, the CFS V2 has been sort of kind of hinting at a, at a big change in weather pattern for August. But now you'll notice this area below average heights are starting to be pushed southwards. So about a week ago, that area below average heights was just to the west of the UK. It was around here to west of Ireland. Now that is being moved down uh, to be sitting kind of off Biscay and uh, Portugal. So it is still there, but it's further south than CFS has had it. And it, the CFS is also beginning to raise heights across Central Europe. Um, it's a fairly weak signature, but it is a sign, perhaps, that hot weather might continue even into August. The way this is lining up with a jet stream going down there, the jet would be doing something rather like that. So it would probably be a more thundery month, yes, there would probably be more precipitation around. But overall, I think the air could still be coming up from the south and off the continent there, even in August. If that is right, we could be facing a very, very hot summer indeed. But of course, that's a really long way off and we'll have to uh, concern ourselves uh, with August when we get closer to that time frame. I think July is going to be... Um, a hot month, though, uh, gasoline.com, in the closing, gasoline.com, July forecast is for a hot uh, month in July. I think it'll have a CET uh, in the 18 Celsius range, which we've only had one of those um, this decade, July 2013. And so uh, I think we have a hot and a dry month. The heat wave and the drought is set to continue and probably intensify. As the month goes along. Right, I'll be back later on with a look at the weather for the next week to 10 days. So come back for that then. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.